Ladies and gents, welcome back to another video. This one's going to be a little different than normal. We're not going to be reviewing any devices that I currently own. We're going to be talking about the new iPads that Apple launched today on May 7th at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. So let's begin. We're on Apple's website here. We're going to head over to iPad. And first things first, we'll click on the iPad Pro. This is the new iPad Pro 11 inch and 13 inch. It is the thinnest Apple device they have ever made. It's even thinner than the iPod Nano. As you can see here, it's the thinnest Apple product ever. And we can scroll through here, but you guys can do that on your own. Really, what I want to draw your all's attention to are some of the very subtle differences between the new iPads and comparing them to the older iPads. So what we're going to do, we're going to compare the M4 We'll do the 11 inch iPad Pro with the M4 compared to the iPad Air 11 inch with the M2. Also compared to the iPad Pro 11 inch fourth generation. So, no, sorry. Yeah, fourth generation with the M2 chip. The new M4 iPad Pro gets a space black, similar to the M3 MacBook Pros. Silver is still an option, the same as it was on the previous gen iPad Pro. The iPad Air, of course, does get a few different color options. But scrolling down, the displays are very similar. Uh, there is a new nano texture display option on the 1 and 2 terabyte models for the M4 iPad Pro. And here's where things get a little bit interesting. I noticed that when we're looking at the chips here, the M4 says up to 10 core CPU. That means there's another option for that. So let me show you guys what that means. If we open another tab, we head back into iPad and we find our iPad Pro. We're going to click on the learn more option up here at the top once it shows up. Let's see. No, we're not. We're going to scroll. Oh, yeah. Wait. No, tech specs. We're going to click on tech specs here and scroll down till we find the processor. So let's see, here we go, M4. So here's where things get interesting. With the 256 and the 512 gigabyte storage options, you get a nine core CPU that's gonna give you three performance cores and six efficiency cores. However, with the one and two terabyte storage options, you get a 10 core CPU with an additional performance core. So that's something to keep in mind. You're losing a performance core with the lower base configuration 256 and the 512 gigabyte storage. You're going to have to upgrade to the one or two terabyte option if you want that full 10 core CPU with all four performance cores. You also get double the RAM on the one and two terabyte iPad Pro models. If you get the 256 and the 512 you're stuck with eight gigabytes which I'm sure is more than fine for an iPad but if you really are pushing this thing to a limit, 16 gigabytes is going to be very nice to have. All right, let's go back to our comparison. The new iPad Pro loses the ultra wide camera. So previous generations, uh, the 11 inch, the fourth, the third and the second gen had a wide camera as well as an ultra wide. So our new iPad only has a single camera on the rear side, which is quite interesting that they took away a camera. I can't remember the last time they've ever taken away a camera on a device like that. All right, moving down here, these things are very similar. Apple has also removed one of the microphones on the iPad Pro. So the fourth gen with the M2 chip had five studio quality mics. The new M4 iPad Pro only has four studio quality mics. A little bit interesting there, their decision to remove one of the microphones. We'll see if that makes any real world differences once these launch. Scrolling on down, there's the new Apple Pencil Pro, which is only supported on the M4 iPad Pro and the M2 iPad Air. It does not work on any older models. There's also a new Magic Keyboard, which is only for the newer M4 iPad Pros. Here's the storage configurations, so we lose out on the 128 gigabytes. That's been upgraded to 256, but the pricing reflects that, so you're not really gaining much. Dimensions are a little bit different. The new iPads are thinner and lighter. Displays are very similar, but you do get OLED on both the 11 inch and the 12 inch. But you do get OLED on the 11 inch and the 13 inch M4 iPad Pro. Brightness is also increased quite a bit. 
and there's the obviously the new nano texture option on the one and two terabyte models. ProMotion stays the same, wide color, true tone, yada yada. Oh, once again, here we go. Here's the nine core CPU compared to the 10 core CPU, depending on which storage capacity you get. Everything else is the same, same GPU, but the RAM is doubled for the one and two terabyte options. Media engines are a little bit different here. They've improved on those and added a few more. Battery life is apparently the same, even though there's no way the battery is the same size. Definitely smaller in the new iPads. And the Apple Pencil Pro adds a bunch of different features, which is pretty interesting. We'll see how those play out in the real world. Here's our camera. Again, we lost that ultra wide camera on the new M4 iPads. The video recording is very similar, but one thing that's different is the ProRes. So in the past, you could not record ProRes 4K 30 if you only had the base 128. Now you still can't record ProRes 30 at the base configuration, but that's no longer 128. Now it's 256. So if you have a 256 gigabyte iPad Pro with the M2 chip, you can record ProRes 4K 30. If you have a 256 iPad Pro M4, you cannot record 4K 30. So that's very strange. I don't know why Apple did that probably has to do with the number of NAND chips that make up that memory. They're probably only using a single NAND chip for that 256 the same way they did with the 128. Uh, the front cameras are very similar but they're on the side which I don't actually like. I like the camera on the top with the older style. I would prefer not to have it on the side. I think that really messes up the symmetry of the device. What else do we have? Here once again four microphones on the new iPad, five microphones on the old one, and there was something, oh the network, the network is a little bit confusing. So on the M2 we got 5G with sub 6 gigahertz and millimeter wave, but it appears they removed millimeter wave on the new M4 chip. I don't know what's up with that or if that's actually what happened. Maybe they just haven't, whoops, maybe they just haven't updated their notes here. Something else that's interesting is we had 32 bands for LTE connection on the M2. Now we're down to 31 bands on the M4. So a little bit interesting there. There is no longer a SIM card tray on the iPad Pro M4. They removed that, stuck with only having an eSIM, whereas you could actually put a physical SIM card in the older M2 iPad Pros. Apart from that, I don't think there's anything else different. So the big differences in terms of the things you are missing out on on the new iPad compared to the old one, you have one fewer LTE band, you are losing out on the millimeter wave 5G antenna, you lose one microphone, and you lose the ultra wide camera. So that's actually quite a few things that Apple has taken away on the new iPad compared to the old one. And then of course we have that little nuance here with the nine core CPU on the 256 512 gigabyte models compared to the 10 core CPU on the one and the two terabyte models as well as the 16 versus 8 gigabytes of RAM but I believe that was the same yeah the M2 iPad Pro also got 8 or 16 so I think that's it maybe there's gonna be more things uncovered as we get our hands on these devices but for now that's what we've got pretty interesting very nice announcement we'll see how powerful the M4 chip is but for now, it looks pretty promising. All right, that's going to do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed this quick look here at the new iPads and some of these subtle differences that were not talked about on stage today from the Apple keynote. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I look forward to seeing you in another one of my videos.